We're in the Paris Opera by Charles Garnier. Now, this was a project that was very much a part of Napoleon III's reconstruction of Paris with the help of Baron Haussmann, who was creating boulevards and a city of spectacle. Haussmann was hired to really modernize the city of Paris, to get rid of those old winding streets, to provide sewers, to bring light into the streets. The Paris that we see today is very much the Paris of Baron Haussmann and Napoleon III. And in fact, when we look from the balconies of the Opera House, we really see all of those broad avenues that remind us of Impressionist painting. But there's no question that one of the great crowns of Napoleon III's reign and of Haussmann's reconstruction of Paris is the work of Charles Garnier and the Paris Opera. It's unbelievably opulent. There's colored marble and paintings and mosaics. So this is Second Empire style it's at its height. And I think what's important to remember, of course, is that this is a theater. Uh, it was where the ballet, where the opera was housed until actually quite recently. This ballet still continues here, although the opera itself has moved. And of course, there's a grand stage. In fact, you can just hear the orchestra practicing as we speak. And if you look at the roof line, you can see that there's a raised area just in back of the dome. And that's actually the pulleys for raising and lowering the scenery that protrudes out of the top. That wonderful copper dome, which is now that brilliant green, is a false dome in that there's a second dome inside. And between those two domes is the area that the great chandelier would be retracted into during performances. That chandelier apparently weighs something like seven tons. So you walked into this great foyer, and there's an enormous, broad staircase with chandeliers and engaged columns, pilasters, and a painted ceiling. And a, a kind of series of arabesques that speak to the Second Empire style, especially in the, the sort of curvilinear nature of the staircase. The extraordinary and, as you said, opulent spaces that are given over for socializing before the performance, during the intermission, and after the performance is nearly as much as is given over to the stage, the orchestra, and in fact the audience in the theater itself, which is to say that the front half of this building is its own stage, but it is the stage of the Second Empire. What it does is it gives us a really good idea of how radical Degas was by going backstage, by not showing us the public face, by showing us the rehearsal rooms, the dancers waiting, their chaperones waiting. You're absolutely right. To understand the radicality of Degas, one really needs to see the front of the opera house. And so all of the formality, all of the pomp, all of the ceremony is given over to this sort of direct observation of these figures in far less than ideal position. Degas, of course, also painted the front part of the house, and he painted certainly the stage on occasion. And there are those other wonderful paintings by Mary Cassatt of the balcony and of the women in the balcony of, of her sister, for instance. And that is another expression, in a sense, of the audience as showpiece. The idea of giving us the unusual view, one has a different perspective on the radicality of that approach. Although, I think Garnier is, in a sense, responsible for that, because if, for instance, we're in the grand foyer at the moment. And if you look, there are balconies that give you very particular but very radical views of the space from a variety of different angles. And in the boxes, the theater itself is round around the back, and the boxes are all giving you probably 180 degrees um, of different angles. And so in a sense, the architecture is speaking to these sort of shifting positions providing that focus on the individual bourgeois, upper bourgeois, yes, and, the individual and their experience. point of view. For instance, every box has its own doorway. Every box is sort of walled off from the other. It's got curtains to draw back. And so there is this notion of the bourgeois and separate bourgeois experience. You're absolutely right. right. But there's no question that the entire building is, in a sense, you know, it is for music, it is for the movement of dance, but it is really about seeing. Mm-hmm.